Story time about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep so I cut her hair. So a little background information. I was 14 and in eighth grade and my best friends and I were having a sleepover. And right before we had went to sleep, we were all talking about this one TikTok trend that was going around. It's like this trend where girls would go and put wax on their boyfriends while they were sleeping and then take it off. Well, I didn't think anything of it. So that night I went to sleep. I should have knew this was gonna happen because I'm always the butt of the joke whenever it comes to our friend group. Like, I'm always the one getting picked on. Like, there was this one thing that my friend Ashley saw online. It was like, if you put white nail polish on your teeth, it would make your teeth whiter. So who did they decide to try it out on? Yup, me. And yes, I could have said no, but these were my best friends. I didn't think that they would intentionally hurt me. Anyway, so like I said, I go to sleep and all of a sudden I wake up in the middle of the night to something very, very, very hot on my face. I open my eyes and all of my friends are standing above me with their flashlights on. Like for part two. Part two about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow while I was asleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, went to sleep, didn't think anything was going to happen, and then I wake up and all of them are standing above me with their flashlights on. And then I realized that Ashley has a stick in her hand. Once I realized that there was wax on the other end of the stick, I started screaming. So then Kelsey decides to cover my mouth. She's like, shh, it's not that bad, I promise, like, don't worry. I get up real quick, I run to the bathroom, and there's like this pink transparent wax on my eyebrow. It was about 3 a.m. and we're all sitting there trying to find ways to get this wax off of my fucking eyebrow. Well, then Amber goes, I'm tired of this, grabs it and rips it off my forehead. So I'm crying at this point. Like I'm in eighth grade, I'm about to have my glow up and y'all gotta ruin it with taking my eyebrow off. So nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night because they thought that I was gonna do something to them. So I acted all cool. I was like, no, it's fine. I can just draw it on. When in reality, I was going to cut this bitch's hair. Like for part three. Part three about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night. I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was gonna cut one of their fucking ponytails off. So I go over to their house next week and every single day that week, they were telling me how good my drawn on eyebrow looked. Um, It didn't actually look good and none of my hairs were growing back. So around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping and they think I'm sleeping. So they're over there talking shit about me on her bed, Ashley's bed. I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's gonna do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. Part three about how my best friend waxed off my eyebrow in my sleep, so I cut her hair. So like I said, nobody went to sleep for the rest of the night. I acted like it was okay because I was plotting in my head that I was gonna cut one of their fucking ponytails off. So I go over to their house next week and every single day that week, they were telling me how good my drawn on eyebrow looked. Um, it didn't actually look good and none of my hairs were growing back. So around 12 o'clock, all of us are ready to go to bed. I'm laying down pretending that I'm sleeping and they think I'm sleeping. So they're over there talking shit about me on her bed, Ashley's bed. I wasn't sure which one's eyebrow I should rip off because the one ripped off my eyebrow, but then the other one put the wax on my eyebrow. They were like, she's sleeping. I don't think she's gonna do anything. She doesn't even have the balls to do anything. So around four in the morning, everybody is dead asleep. I get up and Ashley had her hair in a ponytail. So that was easy enough. I grabbed a pair of scissors out of my book bag and I cut her hair off. Story time about when my entitled boss almost killed me and got himself arrested and fired. I'm allergic to hand sanitizer, alcohol wipes, and generally anything that has alcohol-based products. I even bring my own soap because I can have a reaction to some soaps. I can't even drink this stuff without my lips swelling. My old boss was my cousin, so when COVID hit, I didn't really have a problem until my cousin got promoted and got transferred to a new office. Enter our new boss. We got a mass email going over our new COVID safety procedures, and one of the new procedures is that we have to use hand sanitizer and antiseptic wipes. I sent an email to HR telling them about my allergies with my medical documents. They sent back saying that I don't have to use the hand sanitizer and the antiseptic wipes and that they put it in my file. However, when I sent that exact email to my new boss, he replied saying that all employees have to follow the new COVID safety procedures, no exceptions. When I replied that if I use those products, I'll need medical assistance, he sent me another email saying that if any employee doesn't follow the new COVID safety procedures correctly, then they would be fired. I sent copies of the emails to our union rep and HR department to which they replied that they would talk to him and kind of just told me to ignore him unless he tries to actually fire me. So I go into work and my new boss is literally waiting for me at my desk with a bottle of hand sanitizer in his hands asking me to hold up my hands. 
I replied, no thanks, I'd rather not go to the hospital today. He got mad and literally grabbed my hand and squirted hand sanitizer in it and then rubbed it in. While he was doing it, he said, now that wasn't so bad. I tried to go to the bathroom to wash it off, but he blocked me. Well, I had a bad reaction. Thank God I had my EpiPen at my desk. My boss kept saying that he thought I was lying and kept saying it until I was putting into an ambulance and couldn't hear him anymore. A member of the HR department and legal department came to visit me in the hospital, probably making sure that I don't sue and informed me that he was fired. She also said that they called the police on my behalf. I have no clue how she got my address, but when my husband and I got home, my ex-boss's mother was sitting on my lounge. My mother in law had let her in. She lied and said that she was a solicitor. She introduced herself and said, I'd like to discuss this big misunderstanding that you and my son had. I replied, yeah, well, I don't. You know where the door is. She replied, I'm not leaving until we all come to an agreement. I replied, my husband asked you to leave and I get the fuck out or I call the cops. Once again, she replied, I'm not leaving until we've discussed this misunderstanding. I'm sure we can all come to an agreement. My mother-in-law chimed in, if you don't leave, I'll throw you out. Finally, my husband started calling 911 and she replied, fine, I'll go, but I'll be back. The way she kept saying the word agreement, I'm sure she was trying to bribe us, which is stupid. I don't think I could do anything even if I wanted to. Luckily, we got that attempted bribe on camera. However, she never actually said the exact word, so she was in charge for it, but my father-in-law, who's kind of wealthy and knows everyone, got in touch with her bosses and she was fired, and now she has to answer to some board or something where she might not be able to practice law anymore. My ex-boss took a deal and he's going to be in jail for six months. He'd probably be out in three, but it's better than nothing, right? I have a restraining order out on him and his mother. I've had problems with my mother-in-law long before I gave birth last August, but ever since then, it's been an utter nightmare. When I first came home from the hospital, we went to stay with my parents. Big mistake in general, but she insisted on being able to stay there too as it wouldn't be fair for my parents to get all the time with the baby and not her. My mother-in-law had boundary issues before the baby was born, but after, it wasn't still as awful. She wouldn't listen to any rule that we put in place. Constantly kissing my 40-year-old baby, not giving me time alone to even breastfeed or pump, it had gotten so bad that my PPD had become so exasperated that I wasn't eating and I was crying constantly. My husband tried to constantly get her to stop, but eventually we had to just kick her and by extension, brother-in-law and his grandmother out and send them back home. Now that he has some background on the type of person that she is, it brings us to yesterday. My dad usually watches the baby during the week, which irritated my mother-in-law to no end because it wasn't fair even though she lives an hour and a half away from us. So after harassing us for months, we finally broke down and allowed her to watch her baby every Wednesday at our apartment. Well, yesterday, I was about halfway through my shift at work when I get a phone call from my brother-in-law. He never calls me, so I knew something was up immediately. Apparently, my mother-in-law called him in hysterics that she dropped the baby and was scared that she was seriously hurt. She called my brother-in-law, the one who lives an hour and a half away with her. I quickly hung up and tried to call her seven times with no answer. I called my mom since she lives closer and she immediately went over. At this point, I'm frantic and running to grab my coat when I get my husband on the phone. I explained the situation and he's livid, but his shift was also thankfully ending much sooner than mine, so he was able to leave an hour early and shoot home. He finally got her on the phone, but when he did, she was completely undone and he couldn't understand a word that was being said, so he flew home. My husband and mother got there at the same time to find my mother-in-law sopping on the couch and thankfully perfectly fine, except for a bruise and a cut under the eye, six month old, who was in her bouncer laughing at her grandmother's tears. Everything was figured out and the doctors were seen and we sent mother-in-law home. Here's where I might be the asshole. My mother-in-law called me to try and explain, but I cut her off and told that she could no longer watch my child. And yes, I had already discussed this with my husband. I told her that if she cannot handle an emergency, then she cannot handle my infant alone. She is now inconsolable and telling everyone who will listen that we're never allowing her to see our child again. Am I the asshole for telling my mother-in-law that she's no longer allowed to watch my daughter? Story time of why you should always be aware that your closest friend could be your worst enemy. A woman named Naomi was walking home alone from work. She was right across her house when she noticed somebody was following her. It was late at night, so she couldn't see what this person looked like, but she noticed that they had their face covered. All of a sudden, she felt a splash of some sort of liquid on her face. Immediately, she starts screaming and ran towards her house and starts banging on the door for her uncle to open since they lived together at the time. As she's banging on the door, she's screaming that her face is burning. Somebody had thrown acid on her face, which permanently disfigured her. I posted the pictures on my Instagram story since it might be too graphic for TikTok. Her uncle called the police and an ambulance came to take her to the hospital. They asked Naomi if she knew anybody that would want to do something like this to her. Surprising enough, she said her friend Mary of 10 years had said she wanted to throw acid on her one time when they fell out. When they questioned Mary, she claimed she didn't remember saying that to Naomi. While Naomi was in the hospital, Mary was texting her acting concerned, so it can possibly be her. Until police noticed something on CCTV footage. A person with her face covered who attacked Naomi was holding a purse. That looked exactly like the purse that Naomi's friend always carried around. Part two of why you should always be aware that your closest friend could be your worst enemy. After noticing on CCTV footage that Naomi's attacker who threw acid on her face was holding a handbag that looked exactly like her friend Mary's, they took Mary back into custody and got a warrant to search her home. In the home, they found the bag, and the bag had damages that were similar to damages made with acid on that kind of material. They found out that Mary did this to her friend because Naomi called her ugly one time, and Mary took that personally. Mary knew that Naomi had dreams of joining the beauty industry. She was and still is a beautiful girl. That one time they fell out, Mary became friends with Naomi me again just to get close to her just to throw acid on her face because she was jealous of her she premeditated this attack on her friend mary never wanted to admit that she did it she claimed naomi threw the acid on her own face obviously the judge did not believe that and sentenced mary 12 years in prison ever since the attack naomi felt as if she couldn't ever be seen as normal again she says whenever she goes out in public people react to her face which reminds her of what she looks like it took her a while to gain back her self-esteem but now she has amazing friends who always remind her of how beautiful she is